again and we want to show how we created this landscape and we're going to go back to the basics and show lighting and um, how we created the, uh, the fog and the, the sky color and all that. So as you remember we created a, uh, a texture which we have in the swap image. I'll go to uh, swap buffers, that's uh, J on the keyboard and that shows a texture we just created. So I'll go back uh, swap the images again, swap buffers, and uh, let me do a few undos here to get back to that uh, fractal noise we had there. As you remember we applied plasma noise with the default settings and then we applied a color curve filter to that to make it a more of a craggy looking texture. And then we went to 3D Designer, Transform. 3D designer and that gave us our render as we remember it um, but we, what we want to do right now is go back to uh, the default settings of the program uh, to start from scratch um, now if we had just hit OK or cancel we would have kept our settings here and we could come back to them but a little trick we have in the program is if you click on the uh, close button at the top of the um, these panels it will clear the settings and when you come back the uh, the program will or the uh, the filter will be at all its default settings so I'm gonna do that right now click on the close button and go back to uh, undo this and go back to that fractal noise texture go back to 3d designer under transform and as you can see here we have our default settings across the board um, what we have is a very generic looking texture right now. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn the step value down a little bit right now for the, uh, the sake of this tutorial just to make this run faster. Um, I'm on a netbook so you can imagine uh, with a video capture running right now we're doing our, our best we can with what we've got. Um, uh, I'm going to change the amplitude down all the way, or most of the way at least, because I'm going to show some of the lighting features first. Uh, each light has uh, three settings, um, azimuth, altitude, and zenith, to control the position of the light in 3D space. There are two lights, the light one and light two. I'm going to change the light range on light two down to zero so that we're only seeing one light. Um, and I'm going to adjust this altitude a little bit more because that's still a little too bumpy for what I want to do. Alright, as you can see we have one light right now. It's over here in the uh, on this right corner of our image. I might change the scale down a little bit so we can see this better. Or I might move further away from the surface using this Z, move Z parameter here. Alright, now we can see our whole object and we can see how the lights affect it. If I change this uh, azimuth property you can see the light now rotates around the center point of the object or the center point of the world and that is what azimuth, azimuth does um, if we change the altitude this is a little more uh, we're more familiar with the idea of altitude I'm sure if we move it close to the surface the light gets more blown out because it's closer and it's going to be brighter but it also gets smaller as we go as we go further down because it's getting closer to the surface and it gets more more bright and and also smaller but as we move it out it gets bigger but less blown out and eventually starts getting darker and darker um, there's also a, a specular spot here that's um, specularity uh, which is a reflection of sorts of a light say that with the Sun you'd actually see sort of a reflection of the sun on the surface uh, depending on the glossiness of the surface we can turn that off for now um, that is a good way to get a glossy looking surface by the way you can also change the hardness of that specularity spot to make it uh, more glossy or more matte in quality um, but we're going to turn those off for the sake of our uh, demonstration here um, I'm going to move that altitude back down and as you can see there's sort of an optimal altitude where you can see the light well without it becoming blown out um, 
it just depends on what you're trying to achieve with that so I'm gonna move it right about to that optimal level right about there now Zenith sort of rotates that light around the center of the world or the center of our object I'll show that and it's a 360 degree rotation Uh, let me move. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the azimuth. The zenith actually um, moves the uh, the light in closer or further away. It's the azimuth that rotates the light. So as azimuth rotates it. That's 360 degrees. The zenith actually um, will move it closer to the center or further away from the center. So if you move the zenith in closer you can see that light now rotates but much closer to the center of the world it's, it's useful to move that out further away if we're doing a uh, such as a landscape you might want to have the sun um, be in the background and it's useful to be able to uh, move that further away I'll uh, go ahead and set up our object with our texture on it uh, we're going to use backlighting, so we're actually going to use that zenith to move the light out towards the background and use the azimuth to move it, to rotate it into the right place. We want it directly behind our objects or kind of off to the side a little bit maybe. I'll put it off to the right side a little bit, in fact, for this demonstration. Um, the altitude is also useful there. Say you were doing a sunset, you'd want the altitude pretty low. But if you wanted it to be midday, you would want the altitude to be pretty high in the sky. And uh, one other parameter we have is light range. It's basically the power of the light. If it was a little candle, you might use a very small light range because that light's not going to go very far. But if it's the sunlight, you might want to put it up quite a bit and then move the, uh, the zenith out so the light's really far away looking, as you can see there. And that's going to be very useful for our, uh, our landscape. Uh, one more thing you can do to make a landscape very much more interesting looking is change the color of the lights. I'm going to make this sort of an orange color since we're doing a sunset. <clears throat> As you can see there, it's not very interesting looking yet, but wait until we add this second light back in. I'm going to bring that light range back up, and you can see we're getting our, those lights mixing on our surface a lot more. Let me turn down the first light so we can see the second light better. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the first light. I'm going to rotate that light. And this, uh, the uh, the first one I had on the on the uh, on this left side. I'm going to move this one to the right side a little bit, but it's still going to be in the background. So as we make these both these lights on now, we're going to see uh, when you mix that orange and blue, you're getting still sort of a white quality overall, but they're going to be in different places, so it's going to be much more interesting looking. So I'll go ahead and zoom back in on our landscape by changing that pitch. Then I'm going to change the scale back up because we scaled that down earlier. And finally I'm going to move our camera into place using this Z parameter. Move Z. And there we have it. I'll put the sample step back down so we can see uh, the full, full detail of our object that we've created. And I will also adjust the altitude. Uh, now bear in mind when you adjust this altitude, you can use it to create very distorted looking uh, landscapes. But realistically on Earth, our, uh, our mountains aren't like gigantically uh, craggy like this. Uh, that would be exaggerating things quite a bit. Um, you might see that in a sci science fiction environment, but for normal Earth <clears throat> mountains, we're going to take that down quite a bit. To keep it more realistic looking uh, you might compromise a little bit just to get some artistic value out of it but but don't do it too much because it's just gonna look uh, kind of amateurish and and not too too good <clears throat> so right now we're getting somewhere you can see that lighting uh, we have a nice orange highlight on one side and sort of a, a bluish highlight but um, we want to add a little more interest to that so I'm gonna use actually maybe a, even a, a more intense bluish green color on that other side in a kind of a bright there um, and I'm going to adjust the azimuth a little bit more to get a little bit more of that sunlight 
And I'm going to adjust this other one to make that uh, <clears throat> that blue, a little less of that blue. I'll change the altitude, and then I'll take some of that blue off the, the basic part of our ground, basically. And we're getting a lot more realistic in here just by adjusting that lighting. Uh, one other parameter we have is fog, and that is uh, a fog based on our sky color. So I'm going to change the background color to a new sky color. I'll use a, a light blue. I find that using a lighter blue works pretty well. Um, I want to keep it a blue blue, not a, not a greenish blue, unless you're in a, like Florida or somewhere. But we're out west here, so we're going to use a kind of a deeper, almost a purplish blue. Of about that value right there. Um, maybe a little bit brighter than that. Because once we put that fog in there, it's going to look very blue. And we don't want it to look... Um, like we're in the smog we just want to look foggy okay the fog level is here and you just basically slide on it a value of uh, 0.7 usually works pretty well you can go as as high as you want of course you can make it look like you're underwater if you want to but that might be going too far we just want to look like we're outdoors not that we're in a you know a cloud somewhere so I'm gonna take it down just a bit more right about there in fact and basically all we have to do now is just make sure we've got our camera in the right place I might move this a little bit more so we're closer to the closer to the ground but we don't want to clip <laughs> we don't, don't want the camera to clip through the ground but anyways we're off to a good start um, now remember we created that background texture the texture in the swap image um, we want to go ahead and use that <clears throat> using this color source this will apply that uh, this from swap image color source from swap image if we had just use the object color that would be this uh, button here we could have actually changed the object color just to a, uh, a regular color any single color and that would have worked but it's not particularly uh, the most interesting so I'm going to use um, color source from swap image as you remember, we defined a uh, an image in the swap buffer, and that has basically given us a very uh, uh, varied <laughs> looking uh, texture. Um, as you remember, we we applied some fractal noise, we displaced it, and then we added a sort of a rocky texture on top of that. Um, now remember that that color uh, using that color texture on object may darken this object quite a bit, so we might want to adjust our lights after that. But actually, we're looking pretty good right now. So um, what we've done is basically create a landscape using 3D Designer in, in Howler, using all the um, built-in tools. Uh, we did it fairly quickly. Um, it took a little longer because we had to explain everything. But uh, these are some of the new tools in Howler 8.2. Um, it's a very interactive, uh, easy-to-use 3D tool, uh, mainly uh, for creating height maps and that sort of thing and height maps really lend themselves to creating uh, uh, landscapes you could also create you know architectural objects or just about anything you could imagine in there uh, as long as it's based on a height map using any of the drawing tools uh, remember that we're also a paint program so basically anything you can think of you can paint it in there and that will become your new object uh, you can also use the same idea to create textures anything you can paint can become a texture for that object um, by using that color source swap uh, image feature. Um, also bear in mind we're an animation program so anything you can animate can become a uh, animated 3D object. Basically you could um, you could have the size of these mountains changing. Uh, you could have uh, maybe a blur filter to make it look like the uh, the mountains are kind of uh, eroding over time uh, by applying that through the timeline. Um, anything you can animate you can also apply this 3d designer too so basically you could uh, maybe create a water texture uh, and uh, make some water in there somehow um, you could use the twirl filter to create uh, sort of a cloud effect by making like a like a tornado or a hurricane effect we've shown uh, some demonstrations of that uh, we haven't really fully explored everything you can animate using uh, using the program just yet 
But those are things that are going to be forthcoming. And uh, as always, using your your imagination is a good place to start. Um, and I will show you basically some of the animation capabilities we have uh, as well. Um, there are some built-in animation capabilities uh, right here in the main panel. If you click on animate down here, you can basically animate the uh, the rotation and direction of this uh, this object um, and just apply those very simply. But more importantly, um, let me undo this so we have that fractal noise there. If you create an animation under the animation filter and click create, I'll create a default uh, settings. Uh, just 30 frames. I'll click on this timeline button that's also available under animation and uh, timeline. And basically if you go to this filter button and drop down that menu, way down on the list somewhere under transform is the 3D designer. That will bring up that 3D designer panel just like we, uh, we were using a minute ago. Uh, since we're just using the 3D designer, uh, basically all those settings we had before are, are still in there. I'll click OK. That basically uh, lets us come back into the timeline editor. And now we can interact with the uh, this landscape by just basically dragging around on this little uh, preview icon here. Uh, we can zoom in on it, we could uh, rotate it, and that sort of thing. There are also parameters down here, heading, pitch, bang, X, Y, and Z, that we can ma manipulate uh, using sliders. And we can create keyframes on this animation. This, uh, this little box here represents our animation. There are uh, 30 segments here representing the uh, 30 frames we're using. We can always scale that out to get a... Uh, uh, more granularity there or more uh, little fine tuning ability um, if we need it. If there were more frames, say if there were 100 frames or 200 frames, we would be able to work a little easier on that. You could also zoom in on that and zoom back out as needed. Um, but you can set create keyframes uh, for these parameters, meaning. Uh, well, I'll just set one there at the beginning, and I'll go to the end of the animation. I'll rotate this, and I will zoom uh, the uh, the right mouse button on the uh, mouse will let us zoom in that window. Uh, there are some hints here. Click click and move to adjust right button to zoom, middle button to bring up options. Uh, it'll tell you a few things you can do with each filter on uh, on this little panel here or this little text bit here anyways i'll click a uh, keyframe create a keyframe for this last keyframe now you see we have a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe at the end and if i scrub through this animation now you can see we were actually animated and if i hit apply that will actually go through and render that animation and that is basically a 30 frame animation we've just created uh, on the fly right there um, and that is just a few of the things you can do with the new 3d designer in Howler 8.2 hope you've enjoyed the tutorials um, there's certainly a lot more that could be covered this is just a taste of what's possible um, just remember that we're a paint program and an animation program so anything you animate can be um, used as a mesh so you're not limited to just moving around an object but you can actually create an animated object so feel free to explore and enjoy the new features uh, we'll see you later mm -hmm.